Good morning from St. Petersburg. <laughs> We're in Russia. Yay. <laughs> it's our second day and actually we've come about 30 kilometers south of St. Petersburg. So yeah. I think technically we're in a town called Pushkin. Pushkin. And we've come here to see the Summer Palace, also known as the Catherine Palace. Yeah. And by all accounts, it's truly something to see. So we're starting our full day here. <laughs> Because there's a lot of things we want to see. Yeah. It's blue. I see blue in front of us. <laughs> so we're going to head inside and explore. We're getting our first glimpse now of the palace. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the top. <laughs> Imagine if this was your summer residence. <laughs> that is insane. summer right now as you can probably tell <laughs> how we're dressed yeah a little but, windy too but i have heard that in the high season like july august the queue to get inside here sometimes can be over four hours long <laughs> so i really hope we don't have to wait long to get our tickets but that's i mean this is one of the top things to see in, oh, yeah. in st petersburg um and uh, so it can be a really long wait to get inside but worth it i think this is a little chart showing all of the things that you can see here. <laughs> we have a lot of work ahead of us. Okay, I did not realize that we sort of walked at it from the back. We've <laughs> just come to the front and oh my god. It's jaw dropping. Let me turn you around. <laughs> Look at the palace. Oh my god. <laughs> you can tell how huge this is this is a massive complex there's park that goes all the way way down there but this blue facade is just beautiful the bright color and look how long this building is <laughs> okay it's massive We found the lineup for tickets. <laughs> I was just thinking it's a good thing the facade is so beautiful because I think we're gonna be staring at it for a little while. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah, I don't know how long the line's gonna take. Like it's not a four hour line obviously, but I'm kind of surprised to see this many people. I'm thinking I'm gonna need to get out my sweater. <laughs> it's a little chilly. Yeah. <laughs> I got a hip cramp doing that. They slipping and sliding, slipping and sliding. Now we can skate all over the palace. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a good look. <laughs> okay, my well, turn. Like a really fast tour now. Yeah. They look like elf shoes. <laughs> Super <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> all right. So the line took. Somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour, actually. So longer than we thought. Yeah. We are inside. We got audio guides. <laughs> and we just put little, um, you know, paper things over our shoes. Everyone has to wear them, I guess, to protect the palace inside. Yeah. We're finally at the entrance to the tour. <laughs> so we're going to walk up the stairs and start our official tour. Okay, first impression of Catherine Palace coming up those stairs. Wow. Magnificent, just, wow. yeah. This, it's just beautiful. Like, it's so detailed. Yeah. I can't wait to see the rest of the palace. It's really uh, breathtaking, isn't it's it? It's so ornate. Yeah. yeah. Just beautiful. Yeah. Oh my god. Look at this room! This is unreal. 
Are you seeing a painting up there, by the way? Yeah, look at the ceiling. Wow, wow, wow. It might be the biggest painting I've ever seen. <laughs> is the largest stateroom in the palace. It's covered in gold and mirrors and windows. I think they said it's 800 square meters. Oh, it's enormous. It's the size of a lot of people's apartments. Actually way bigger. <laughs> way, bigger. way, way bigger. What am I talking about? <laughs> and there's this enormous painting on the entire ceiling. And I'm just imagining what it must have been like when this really was an imperial palace that the family lived in. Mm. I'm just trying to, you know. It would have been neat to see a ball in here or something. Yeah. The reason this is called the Catherine Palace is it's named after Catherine I. She was the wife of Peter the Great, for whom St. Petersburg is named. And this palace was commissioned by their daughter Elizabeth. And it's said that the beautiful blue color that covers the exterior of the palace was Elizabeth's way of paying tribute to her mother's eye color. It's an okay mural, I guess, eh? I can't get enough of the ceilings. Like, you, you're so impressed by the room, and then you lift your gaze up. Yeah. There's just these incredible paintings. Yeah. Every they're, single ceiling. They're magnificent. It's enormous. Yeah. And then you look down, and you see this crazy floor, too. I know. This whole room is just unreal. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> can we make our living room like, like this one day? <laughs> yeah. A lot of the palace was damaged during the Second World War, and this room is a really good example of that. There used to be a really ornate carved ceiling and 103 paintings that were inset into the walls. They have a rendering here that shows you what it looked like. After the war, they only were able to recover 10 because everything that was originally here was completely lost. So it's interesting as you're walking around to know how much of this was lost and then has since been restored. This is a portrait of Catherine I, who the palace is named after. Her husband was Peter the Great. And this is their daughter, Elizabeth, who commissioned the palace. The most famous room in this entire palace is this. It's the Amber Room, and it's covered in Baltic amber. And during the Second World War, these panels off the wall were removed by the Nazis. And to this day, nobody knows what came of those original amber walls. However, they took 20 years to restore the room as you see it today. It cost over the equivalent of 11 million US dollars. And there's nowhere else like it in the world. Nowhere else has amber been used in this way to decorate an entire room. some kind of miracle right now, but there's like almost nobody else in this room. Yeah, and by almost we mean like still 20 people, yeah. but there were hundreds it of people in here. It was wall to wall. I got pushed and jabbed and It felt like a mosh pit. Skin <laughs> like this. Yeah. Someone pushed me out of the way. <laughs> but this is much more civil now. Now it's just the two of them and 20 other people. <laughs> Little weather change since we first went inside. Ah! <laughs> okay, not so good at vlogging with the umbrella. <laughs> anyway, we are just leaving the grounds and trying to find uh, our Yandex. Our Yandex, basically Where Russian Uber, to take us back into St. Petersburg. We made it through some very rainy traffic. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and we've arrived at the Fabergé Museum, which has another royal connection. These are all fabulous eggs that the royal family used to give each other for Easter. <laughs> so, another royal connection for today. Yeah, very royal day. <laughs> We've just started. 
started seeing maybe one or two eggs so far and my mind is blown. They are so beautiful. I can't imagine receiving one of these for Easter. I just think of every time I've made like an Easter egg <laughs> and uh, I have a lot of work to do <laughs> to get to this level. It's a little different than a kinder's <laughs> yeah, no, Painting a little egg. The, the details on these are just incredible. Like, I, I can't imagine all the work that went into making them. One year to make one. Yeah, one year. <laughs> Why'd you take the egg, Eileen? I don't know what just happened. In the room with all the eggs, and then they started shutting the doors. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And then he said, get out for five minutes, and then you can come back. So hopefully we can go back in because I didn't see all the eggs. No. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. It seemed like a security problem. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, we're back in the room. I tried to talk to a guard to see what happened, but he couldn't really explain in English. Just kept saying five minutes, five minutes. So we're now back in the room and uh, ready to look at more eggs. <laughs> Are you uh, getting as excited for Easter as I am? For Easter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just looking at all I these can't eggs. Wait for my Saturday. I know. <laughs> Well, maybe if you're lucky this year. As long as it has pearls and diamonds. Yeah? Okay. Okay. See what I can do. <laughs> okay, just covered in chocolate. Okay, sure. <laughs> Even better. When you see the incredible detail, like some of them have birds that have real bird feathers, or they started making them sort of like music boxes where you put a key in and a bird would pop out, or different things would happen, or like it, carved out of jade from Siberia, yeah. onyx from Mexico, yeah, pearls and rubies yeah. and diamonds, diamonds. And, and watercolor paintings, yeah, it's sketched onto ivory, like <laughs> just completely mind reels, yeah, and put the. the the craftsmanship in these eggs is it's just mind blowing, really. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Have you been letting it sit down all day? It just came to me. It's extraordinary. I have an excellent sense of humor. <laughs> This is called the coronation egg because the surprise that was inside the Easter egg was this carriage. And it's an exact, exact model of the carriage used by the royal couple during their coronation. Right down to the curtains inside and the wheels turning. This is called the Order of St. George egg. It was the last egg made by Fabergé for the royal family. And the reason it looks less ornate is because all of the best craftsmen, um, or many of them, were called away during the First World War. And also, the royal family was trying to be less extravagant during that time. So you can really tell a difference between this egg and all the others. Once you start at every Fabergé egg at length, and walk around the rest of this palace, you realize that it's full of treasures and each one has just exquisite detail. The Fabergé Museum, which by the way is a palace, it's historic and beautiful in its own right, but this museum has the second largest collection of imperial Easter eggs in the entire world. They have nine imperial Easter eggs. The Moscow Kremlin Armory has 10 imperial Easter eggs, but this collection is special because they have the first imperial Easter egg and the last imperial Easter egg. alone with the Fabergé eggs. I can't <laughs> And after the absolute silliness in the Amber Room at the Catherine Palace oh today goodness. getting pushed around, yeah. this is like, oh, It's like night and day. I can't believe there's no one else here. Do you have a favorite?
favorite egg. That's really hard. I know, they're all so beautiful. I'm looking around trying to decide. I love this tree, actually, I have to say. Yeah, I love this one. It's so beautiful. And I believe this one was a gift from one of the emperors to his mother. And it has some symbolism about loyalty and love. So I like that too. Loyalty. security guard who just kicked us out. <laughs> I did not want to leave those eggs. I guess we really like those eggs. I guess so. They were like, excuse me, the museum's closed now. <laughs> Actually, they didn't say that. <laughs> they just sort of motioned for us to leave. Pretend there was a big cane in there pulling us out. It's really be drastic, you guys left now. <laughs> Time to go. Why are we spinning? I don't know. Okay. Just seems I'm fun. I'm gonna be sick. Okay, we'll okay. stop right there.